This is an update of the North America Commodity Softwood Lumber prices and market for the beginning of May 2024. Hello again, everyone. Kata Kostman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. Here I am again to give another update of what's happening with the Softwood Lumber panel commodity prices, FOB mill, mill gate price, producer price, across North America and it's down. Prices are down, which is unusual for the time of year. Uh, normally now when we're in spring and the building season either is underway or is really getting underway, ordering is up. People are buying wood and they're having it delivered to their projects wherever they might be. A lot of them, of course, in the U.S. because that's where the a lot of the home building the large majority of the home building is. So my regular viewers will remember that for a lot of this year, those prices were flat. That benchmark Western Spruce Pine Fir KD 2x4 number two and better was around $452 US per thousand board feet for most of this year. And it dropped in the middle of April to 408. And last week at the end of April was still 408. ESPF, Eastern Spruce, prices uh, followed a similar trend, and those two are now almost exactly where they were the same week last year. So 2023 price point at the end of April for Western Spruce 2x4, Eastern Spruce 2x4, almost exactly the same as it is right now. Southern Pine on the east side was way higher one year ago. So... When I talk about how those three items all meet the building code and it's up to the user which one they prefer. And so a lot of times those three prices move very much together in the same direction. Right now we have a divergence. And so here is a two year rolling price history of those three items, monthly averages against each other. That yellow line is the Southern Pine East side two by fours. You can see that it waffles up and down in relation to the other two, Western Spruce and Eastern Spruce, over that time. But this year, crested up higher by quite a bit. And then now, in the last couple of weeks, corrected down a lot more. This is a 10-year history. This, these graphs are generated by my dashboard. And these are what my customers can look at when they log in, as I explained. So of course, that extremely high volatility there from 2020 to 2022, but all the other times from 2015 onward, you can see how generally speaking, those prices move together. But look at the very end there this year, that yellow line is up quite a bit. Now, did that mean that a year ago, those sellers tried to raise the price too high and the market couldn't bear, and so now it's back down? Or was there another reason? Potentially, I would think that and the log supply. Because in the U.S. South, uh, for the past few years, there has been a significant volume of loblolly pine that has come to maturity and needed to be harvested. And so the sawmills had ample, ample timber supply at a good price because they were basically able to dictate to the seller what they would pay for those logs. And that would mean, you know, an increase in manufacturing. And if they went too much and now have the supply demand balance in the favor of the customer, that would make sense that that price is lower than one year ago, while the northern species, the west uh, and east, prices are, f are flat compared to one year ago. And so what is happening in the market to have made that price, which was uh, flat for most of this year, drop? Well, the secondary suppliers, the wholesalers and the reloads, have been undercutting the mills. The mills, as you know, or if you watch my videos and read my website, you know that the production volumes are down, especially in Canada. 
2023, Canadian volumes were 6% lower than 2022. And, and, you know, these are not years where there was a lot of manufacturing. If you compare to like 2018, it's down a lot. Uh, in the U.S., the production volumes were relatively even uh, last year compared to the year before. And the sawmill capacity utilization rates, again, in Canada are down compared to the previous year and are relatively flat in the U.S., but down compared to prior to 2020, right? So this is, this is kind of where everybody's confused because they don't know where is this market going to land after the dis disruptions to society from the COVID and the destruction of the transportation in British Columbia from the atmospheric river to consecutive events that really impacted the market. And so the secondary suppliers, the wholesalers and the reloads for the past definitely month have been selling below what the mills are asking. Now, when you have this together with a sawmill order file that's barely two weeks, this does not give the sawmills a lot of ability to reject counter offers. So when you have a customer who's reluctant because there's a lot of uncertainty and the more they hold back thinking maybe the price will drop and then I'll buy and then the price does drop, the mills really, there's only a certain amount of time that they can hold that off. So anecdotally, we have just now, you know, sort of in the past week or this week, an increase in selling. Does that mean the price is going to go back up? The mills would rather bring more wood online at this price, whatever price it's going to end up being. The mills would rather get back to selling the volume that they had, that they were uh, previous to all of this slowdown, at a good price than higher price but low, low volume of sales. So the business of running a sawmill is very complicated between sourcing the logs, you know, getting the uh, timber, uh, access to the timber and bringing the logs into the mill. This takes a long time. It's not just like in two weeks they can switch and suddenly start running higher volumes. They need to know. A sawmill will plan six quarters in advance, a year and a half. And that's why in the past, the normal macroeconomic cycle of the housing going up and down every year and a half, approximately, and the seasonality of spring becoming uh, an increase in buying in the home building and then a drop after Labor Day, that's something that the mills could count on and that's how they could make their plans. I'm going to be making a video on housing and lumber, and I'm going to do another video on plywood and OSB because those prices did move uh, in the past three weeks. Up, a little bit back down, but still higher than they had been through this year, which was also flat. So what happened there? Now, the reason that I talk about these particular items and I show those uh, six top six on the table on my website every week is because that's what is needed to build a normal North American, European, Japanese single family home. Some kind of two by four dimension, some kind of stud and a panel, either plywood or OSB. Okay. Now, as I have explained in the past, Plywood and OSB manufacturing is much more tightly controlled than Dimension Lumber. There are fewer companies making it, and there are fewer facilities manufacturing. And a lot of those companies are not publicly traded, so they don't have to answer to shareholders. And if the price of the plywood or OSB goes to a point that they don't like, they go off the market, and they just won't sell. They will not sell below the cost of production the way sometimes the dimension number does. So plywood and OSB are a good forward indicator of what might happen with dimension lumber, but not always because panel is used for other things besides single family home building. So 
if we had a change in the plywood and OSB prices, a significant move three weeks ago, but not with dimension lumber, it could foreshadow something that's upcoming, or it could simply be ordering for other things that are not new housing construction. The other thing that's making it complicated as if it isn't always complicated is uh, the weather. Uh, just to this past weekend, there was some very, very severe storms in the US. And when that causes the destruction, especially for remodeling and re-roofing, uh, that brings orders for wood, especially panel, beyond new home building. And fires. There's already in April significant fires in the north and in the west, which is actually terrible because if there are that many fires that they can't put out this early in the year, that is going to be, that just can't be good for July and August. So even though normally by now, traditionally, we'd be able to say, you know, oh, spring is low, so the housing's not gonna be that great. There's so much other factors that haven't let us know yet how it's gonna go for this year. When I talk about the lumber and the housing, because the lumber prices that we do come out every week for that week, and the housing starts data comes out once a month for the previous month, so it's on a six week lag. And my lumber prices can tell you now what's going on with housing now, which you will find out in two months when the uh, next data is released. So people are asking me based on that, what do I think is gonna happen with housing, which of course I don't know, but I will say that there have been times in the past when the construction season was literally a six week blip. There were six weeks of home building, that's it. And if we do have that this year, the wood that is out there already will be enough to serve that demand and the sawmills will not need to increase their manufacturing for this summer. So let's look at some graphs. I know that's a lot. Here's the data to demonstrate what it is that I'm saying. And then I'll come back and let you know a little bit more. And so then here we have a year over year comparison. Again, a two year rolling. The Western Spruce Pine Fir KD 2x4 number two and better. And the red line 2022, that huge volatility is gonna start getting worked out in a couple of months. And the scale of this graph is gonna run from zero to 600 instead of to 1200. And then those other lines for last year and this year won't look quite as flat. Although the blue line for this year is flat, like I was saying at that uh, US 452 per thousand. And then now the last couple of weeks uh, at the end of April dropped. Very unusual for the time of year. And really not sure what that will indicate because we are in new territory of an unknown landscape. And that's why people check back often and do subscribe so that they can see the data for themselves. Here is the table of the top six items that I talk about all the time. The top line is that Western Spruce I was just showing, showing you and you can see how it is now at 408 for a couple of weeks after being at 452. Southern Pine down uh, compared to a week ago and to the previous month as I was saying. Eastern Spruce also down, not by as much from a month ago, but in the past week, yeah, that dropped. Studs are flat, that might help indicate a couple of things. And Douglas fir green, that is a specialty item prized by architects and builders on the US Eastern Seaboard and for custom homes in California and Texas. And then, like I was saying, panel, the plywood, it is down week over week, but it rose quite a bit in the previous months and I'll be doing a video on that. Here's those same data points presented as a graph. I do ask you to look at the blue line at the top there, Canadian softwood plywood. Quite an increase while the dimension lumber prices were going down, except the Douglas fir, as I was saying, which is that teal line 
Uh, that might be because there is a constraint on supply coming out of the West Coast due to some of these wildfires, uh, the ban on harvesting as we enter fire season, or potentially an increase in demand as those builders do stock up on wood for future construction. Again, this is only going to be known as time plays out and we really do start getting into the summer building season across North America. Okay, so that's where we're at. Now from those graphs, you can see that in a couple of months, those high highs that we still had in middle of 2022 will be moving out of the graph and the scale will go back to, you know, a normal range between zero and like 600. And the movement of the price changes will be easier to see. Still right now, those lines look really flat because the graph uh, scale is going up to $1,400, uh, which was like a one-time situation that is now behind us. So check back often. Uh, we will be giving updates every week to let you know how the market is moving. If you like what you see here, subscribe. So you will be notified when you, when we do another video, click like, so this awesome content will be recommended to other viewers. And if you need more than just this small snapshot, if you need the full list of the 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices that we do track every week, here in my caption is a link to the website, fill out a form. We'll send you a sample of that list of all the commodity items and what the price is that week. And we will send you the commentary explaining why those prices are changing. This is what my customers log into every week, Thursday evening, Friday morning, to see what's happening with the market. And that's the information that they use the following week when they make their negotiation. So don't miss out, subscribe, and go on my website and check back often.